All right, here we go. Please listen up very carefully. Everyone should have totaled up their do not pass it back to the person who owns it. In order to be successful for class today, I would open up your notebook and I would take out your whiteboard, please, and thank you. Please listen very carefully. On Friday, we talked about what the expectations of this week were. Hopefully, yesterday, you did as you were told, spent a quality time uh, reviewing for your AP World. You should have done at least two, absolutely no more than three, looking at AP World, looking at your worst section. How did that go yesterday? Good. Going okay. You should not be spending any more time than I'm telling you to do. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you. Now, if you have it, you don't need to have it. I'm going to tell you anyway. It's all on your little sheet here that we picked up on Friday. Tonight, you should be spending an hour to two working on AP World. I am well aware tomorrow is AP Art History. I am aware. I will be in the room, people. So I'm aware it's happening tomorrow. But if you are taking AP Art History, you still owe AP World one hour of quality studying. Now, if you are an AP Art kid... You do owe AP World an hour of studying, whether you're going through your second worst, which is what you're supposed to be doing today, because I have a little chart, and it tells you Monday, your second worst section, going through your notes and uh, going through those packets, or you could do your practice test in your parents book, whatever you want to do tonight. Everyone in the room should be doing it. Um, if you're an APR kid, I would do literally an hour. As soon as you hit that one hour mark, put it away. I would study for Ren for two at the max. Absolute three if you're not doing quality studying. The most important thing that you can do for Ren today is to get to bed early. If you think studying for Ren for four or five hours tonight is going to be anything productive, you're delusional and don't waste your time. It's not going to help. Colton, stop clicking your pen. With that being said, you should spend two to three hours on Ren and that's it. The best thing you should be doing tonight is getting to bed early. That's really the best thing. Now, tomorrow morning, you don't have to be, if you're an AP art kid, you don't have to be here till 11.30. I would wake up between 8 and 9. I would do an hour of AP World before. I would, because you're not going to do shit after that exam. You and I both know you're going to go home and just crash, which makes perfect logical sense. So I'd wake up at 8, study for literally an hour. As soon as it hits the one-hour mark, close it. I would glance over your AP art history stuff. Glance, glance, glance. No one should be studying for AP art tonight, tomorrow morning. No one. You're not going to retain it. You're not trying to stress yourself out. I would glance at it. Keep in mind, I'm telling you the same exact thing to do on my day, too. Can we agree? So it's not like... Not sabotaging. You shouldn't be studying for AP Art History that morning. Glance over it. You need to be in the gym by 11.30. Is Ren doing a morning thing or no? No. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. There's nothing you're going to learn except anxiety and stress <laughs> if you try studying for AP Art History in the morning. You should sleep in until 8, 9 at the latest. I would do an hour of AP Art, AP World in the morning. Or you can do it after your test, but you're going to be completely fried after your test. The best thing you can do AP Art History in order to prepare for AP World tomorrow is to get to bed early after your exam. Because <coughs> you're going to be completely fried, and then you have a day with me, and then you're going into your exam in early morning Thursday. You need to get sleep. You need to get sleep. You need to get sleep. So tomorrow night, I'd also planning on getting to bed early because you're going to be exhausted, and you've literally, like, essentially, like, 24 hours before your AP Art, AP World exam. What? 7.30. You act like I haven't told you. They, you need to be... Were you here Friday? <sighs> Why do I say things? If you look on the back of the worksheet that we went over incredibly closely, you will notice that on Wednesday you're doing two to three hours of studying, but if you do good quality hours, you're doing two. If you're doing kind of looking at your phone every couple minutes, then you're doing three. You're going to bed at 10 p.m., Colton, on Wednesday because your exam is at 7.30. You will be in Ren's room at 7, correct? Do you remember this? After you eat a real breakfast, like protein, carbs, fats, you're going to have a real breakfast on Thursday morning. You are going to glance at whatever stresses you out about AP World. If it's Cold War, look at Cold War. If it's the Persians, look at the Persians. You're glancing, you're not studying. You need to be in Ren's room at 7. You need to have two pens, two pencils, Two snacks, a sugary and a sweet and a healthy one, because you need it for the essays. And you need to have your AP pack, AP pack, AP pack. If I was you, I'd put all of it into a gallon bag, and that's where it would be. Okay, so if I was you, that's exactly what I would do. 
That is also a good thing for Ren's exam tomorrow. Now keep in mind, if every one of my kids, because every kid in that room belongs to me, if every single one of my kids shows up on Wednesday ready to go and they're in Ren's room at 7, they on Thursday, they are in Ren's room at 7, they're in the gym by 7.30 and everyone has their stuff, you guys could begin your exam by 7.50. That's ideal because if you don't start till 8.15, 8.20, like some of these exams aren't starting till, that means you're just sitting there waiting for the exam to happen. Can we agree? That sucks. That's not ideal. If everyone shows up prepared, then you can start early and on time. So if one person doesn't show up prepared, it holds everyone back and everyone's sitting there waiting. Bring your damn AP pack. Have it packed, ready to go with your two snacks, two pens, two pencils. Okay? That's Thursday morning. Tomorrow, I am teaching third period tomorrow for all of you non-AP art kids. I will be here tomorrow. We are going to go over anything you want from periods four through six. I'm going to record my class instruction. I'm going to record my tutoring session that I'm doing at 7.45 tomorrow morning. Um, and then that's it. And then tomorrow night, all of my AP World kids, including my AP Art kids, they are going to be doing at least an hour to two hours of studying tomorrow. AP Art kids should do it before their exam just because you're going to be exhausted after and it does complement. And then all of my AP World kids do it in the afternoon. Why the hell would you wake up early to study for AP World? So, any questions about what it should be? Everything is listed here. When I say an hour to two, I mean it. When I say two to three, I absolutely mean it. And if you are doing good quality studying, you should be done at two. Or one hour. If you're doing good quality studying. If you're all over the place, then you should be doing to the cap. But I don't want you going over the cap. The most important thing, and I'm talking right to you, Emerson, because you weren't listening to, my, listening to my boy, William. The best thing you can do is try to keep your stress down. It is the absolute best thing you could do. Like on my Wednesday night, the day before my exam, I'd like you to finish early, study for your two if you do meaningful time, or worst case three if you're a little distracted, and then I'd rather you sit on the couch for like an hour and hang out <laughs> and go to bed by 10. Relax. Do something that makes you happy. The worst thing you can do is stress. The worst thing you can do is stress. So if you're stressed about Ren's exam, it's going to go terrible. Guys, there's no panic in my voice. I have anxiety. My heart rate's at 88, but <laughs> I have anxiety, but I'm not stressed. You can hear in my voice, I'm not panicking. I'm not telling you, oh, my God, you got to study for, like, six hours. That's not what I'm saying at all. You are ready, but it's now about you controlling your emotions and doing what you have to do. If you do not study for my exam in the time periods I'm asking you to, you're going to start losing your points here because hopefully you see that class has kind of calmed down. We're breathing. We're crossing things off, we're discussing the things that you need, but we're not panicking because we don't need to, but you still have responsibilities that you need to take care of. Everyone clear on that? Everyone feel like they know what they're doing in the next couple of days, because we're all over the place. So, your AP art history, good luck tomorrow, get to bed early, make sure you're studying for AP World tonight as well. Do not forget about me tonight. I get an hour of your time tonight, that's it. Study for practice tests, look over content, it's complimentary, it's not going to hurt. All right. <clears throat> So, how it's going to go for the rest of this week. By the way, I only have three more wake-ups. And then we're done. How exciting. With that being said, how it's going to work for the next three days is I'm going to say, all right, what do you need from period one or two? Anyone have any questions? No one has any questions about period one, two, or three. Morgan. Um, Persia. I love the Persians. All right. So if you need the Persians, I'd write it down. If you don't, I would definitely listen because it's definitely going to help. So your Persians are period two. Okay. Your Persians are period two. There's a bunch of things you need to know. So period two, Persians, period two. Okay. For your first one is the Ahmed. <laughs> Okay. They are your golden age. They are your golden age. There's two people you need to know. First one is Darius the first. Darius the first. He is the first person in the world, okay, to do freedom of religion. He is the first person in the whole world to do freedom of religion, which makes him pretty damn special. 
Okay, then you also need to know a guy named Xerxes. Okay, Xerxes, he's going to fight in the Persian Wars. Persian Wars, and that's between who? Persians, Persians, Persians versus Greeks. And he's, of course, going to? Lose. He loses. Okay, so those are your two major people you need to know from the Ottoman Empire. A couple things you need to know. Some major accomplishments. Okay, first they have the Royal Road. That's theirs. The Royal Road. You have your spy ring, which is part of their bureaucracy. They're going to create bureaucracy in Central, in the um, Middle East. They are also going to do, what is the, what do we call the, keeping the water underground? Knots. Oh. Knots. They're the ones doing that. What's they the are second? Also, huh? What's the second thing? Uh, spy ring. So they're doing the Royal Road, they're Zoranashianism. Um, what else? Those are the big ones. Royal Road, Spiring, Bureaucracy, Canox, Zoranashianism. Perfect. So that's all you really need to know for your Akhmets. Then you have your Cichlids. Your Cichlids. They are post Alexander the Great. Okay, so they are post Alexander the Great. That's pretty much it. This is uh, during your Hellenistic. Okay. And then after your Suclid, you have your Parthenians. And they are fighting the Romans. They're fighting the Romans. So, do the Romans and the Greeks overlap? No, but the Persians overlap with both the Greeks and the Romans. Please keep that in mind. And then you have your Sassanid. Your Sassanid, okay, they call themselves the descendants of the Ottomans. Ottomans. Okay. And that's their big claim to fame. Uh, they're also going to adopt Islam. They adopt Islam. So they go from period two, obviously, into. So they go, they bleed into three. However, who is the first Middle Eastern empire to have Islam as their founding principle? Philip. Umayyad. So the Umayyad are your first Muslim empire. Please keep that in mind. However, uh, during period three, Islam is going to start being popular, and eventually towards the end of it, they're going to be like, oh my god, Islam. But the first empire that is built on Islam is the Umayyad, so make sure you know that. And that's period three, of course. So this is period three, so make sure you're keeping it. Uh, what do you got, Kylie? Of the uh, period to uh, India. Okay. Period to India, we got it. It's like Mayoran. Yeah, all of your Mayorans, all of the same similar damn name. Okay, so period two, India, or South Asia. Period two, South Asia. Okay, so it's gonna start with the Mayoran. Your founder is Sandra Gupta. Look at the spelling, please. Mayoran. Okay, he embraces and implements Buddhism. Oh, yeah, Ashoka. No, he forces it. He forces it. Now, Ashoka is your second. Oh, he is also the first to unify. Unify <coughs> India. So, your second ruler is Ashoka. Now, Ashoka is a Buddhist. He is a Buddhist, but he is freedom of religion. So, he doesn't force people to do it. So he's the first person in South Asia to preach freedom of religion. Everyone loves him, <coughs> except for the guy who killed him. Okay, so that's his big claim to fame. Okay, so he is their golden age. He's the golden age. Okay, he builds up the bureaucracy too big, and that's why it falls. Okay, so the Mayoran died. Then you have your Gupta. Your founder is Sandra. Gupta. Please look at the spelling. Okay, Sandra Gupta is your founder. He's going to create an empire that is based on math and science. Okay, 
They are in the southern, by the way. Southern two. Okay, their major discoveries, of course, are the monsoon winds. And what is their other major discovery? Zero. That is their big thing. Okay, here we go. The Assyrians, would you like to deal with this at all? Not really, just they exist. When? The Assyrians are Babylonian, they're all in the Mesopotamia. Okay. Hey, what are, like, um, so what's the uh, Persian and Greek war, and then like Persian how, war? How will Greek war? Like, huh? How will Greece fall? How the Greek city states? Fall? The Greek. So, so here we go. So you have okay, Greek, Greece versus Persia. Okay, you have the Persian Wars first. Yep. Persian Wars are between Xerxes versus the Dillion League. That's a nice little league, but that's fine. Dillion League is uh, all Greek city-states. Unified. Okay, so Greeks win. What's the name of the battle, final battle? At Greeks win at Marathon. So, after the Greeks win, we have a guy named Pericles. Pericles, okay, he is the Golden Age. And he rebuilds what structure? Acropolis. With Dillion money. And this follows is directly causes the Peloponnesian War. Which is Sparta versus Athens. Who wins? Sparta. Sparta, but who's the real winner? No, no, there's second. Philip the second. Sparta wins. However, the real winner is Philip the second. And why is Philip the second the real winner? Yeah, he invades. Is Pericles of Greek? Pericles is Greek. Do we want to go over our Greek empires? Wait, where is he? He's from Macedonia, which is just north of Greece. What else can you? Do you want to go over to Greek? Can we? Yeah, that's fine. Guys, you tell me what you want, and that's what we'll do. Your Greeks, here we go. So, Greeks are in what period? Period two. No, they're not two and, they're just two. Period two. So, the first one you have is the Ottomans. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's such a lie. The Minoans. <laughs> the Minoans, they are located on Crete. They are sailors. Okay, that's pretty much it. Okay, then you have your Mycenaeans. Your Mycenaeans. This is your golden age. This is your golden age. You only really need to know one person. That's Pericles. Pericles, and he rebuilds Athens. Post Persian War. Dillion money. Equals Peloponnesian. That's the only guy you need to know. Okay, major accomplishments. Okay, this is where you have your Iliad and Odyssey. Okay, this is where you have all of your um, Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, all of those people are just hanging out there in this. This is where you have all of your gods, your Greek gods and all that stuff. So everything that you think of for Greece is coming from the Ottomans. So if you only, from, not from the Ottomans, from the Mycenaeans. So if you only know one empire from the Greeks, who should you know? 
Mycenaeans. They're the they're the big ones. Um, they're the ones accomplishing all of the major stuff. Then you have Alexander the Great. Okay, he is the second largest single man empire. And he's a part of the Mycenaeans. Uh, no, he's his own thing. He they Philip the second ends the Mycenaean age. Philip the second ends it. And then we have Alexander the Great. Okay. He is going to conquer territory. Uh, and what do we what do we call his Egyptian conquest? Ptolemy. Ptolemy. Ptolemy is going to be Egypt. Ionian. Greece. And then uh, and and go this. Well, does he consider like a Hellenistic age also? This is, yeah. yeah. So he's going to conquer these territories. He conquers. He conquers. He conquers, but he dies early. That's that Euclid is what Antigone is. It's just under different name. Okay. Dies early. He dies early. It's chaos. However, it directly causes the Hellenistic Age. Hellenistic Age. Okay. His M his generals rule these territories. Okay. All the, the other thing you need to know about the Hellenistic is the Olympics. Why do they have Olympics? What is the point of it? Standing. No. What is the point, Kylie? Yeah, see who were the best Greeks, okay? And Alexander the Great was all about, <coughs> he loved Greek culture. He loved it. And he's going to be the best person at spreading it. He loved it. That's all you need to know about the Greeks. That's it. And then eventually they'll fall. Annie? Um, could you use, like, like the Odyssey, like Socrates, as, like, um, Socrates, yeah. Socrates, you know. Um, could you use it as, like, evidence? Yeah, of course. Or something. Or the Mycenaeans all day. Are we allowed to go out of period one and two? Yeah, I'm going to three. I'm heading to three. Or Anyone need got, anything? Could I ask six? Watching. I yeah. just want to get a run through of all of the Russian leaders. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Does anyone have any two or three? What? One, two, or three. Josh. Uh, Byzantines. Okay, that's in three. Okay, so Byzantines. Let me focus on two and three today. Please don't hate me. Five times yeah. again? Yeah. I don't have one. Okay, two and three, uh, Byzantines. Okay, so you need to know that Byzantines are your first Christian based empire. First Christian empire. That's their big claim to fame. There's a couple people you need to know. You need to know Justinian. Okay, he's their golden age. Okay, obviously he has Justinian code, which is what redone? It's the 12 tables redone. Okay. You also need to know that he built what building? Hagia Sophia. Hagia Sophia. So you also need to know Theodora, and who is Theodora? His wife. His wife. Yeah, who is loved by the people. Loved by the people keeps it unified. Okay. You also need to know Belsarius. Who is Belsarius? Sorry, I see he's just an English general. This is quite the shoulder. He's just an English general, and they recapture like two thirds of Roman of Rome's empire, Rome's territory. Those are your big people. Okay, a couple of big terms you need to know is Caesar Apophism. Okay, and it means that the emperor. Is not the god, but picked by God. And this the king of the is the foundation of what future thing? Like the foundation of divine. Can you use Caesar Apophism for Eastern Orthodox Russia? Yes. Okay. As it is okay. now, those two things are the only places. I would use only it. use it really in the Byzantine Empire. Okay. You could use Caesar Apophism as the foundation for what will become 
um, an absolute rule in Russia is saying divine right, but I would right, only use right Caesar now, apophism. So I would only use Caesar apophism in Byzantine. Okay. Um, what is the land system that they give us? The theme system. And the theme system, loyal soldiers, receive land. Why would they do it? Huh? Yeah, it's to promote loyalty. Promote loyalty and grow wealth. Grow wealthy class. Class slowly. Because you want always want the wealthiest class growing, but you don't want it to grow too fast because you can't support it. And you don't want it to grow too slow, people are going. So, what else we got? Theme system. Is that what you wanted? I don't remember who asked. Is that okay? Those are the big things you need to know. What do you need, Morgan? Well, what causes great Great iconoclasm. Because of the uh, Western Eastern, Eastern Orthodox are so far apart, uh, they start uh, worshiping uh, icons differently. Javi? Do you want Western Europe? Okay. Okay, period three, Western Europe is kind of a shit show, people been one I've already done because it is kind of a shit show. So period two we have the fall of Rome. Who can tell me what year of Rome falls? Oh god. July 13th. No. <coughs> falls in 410. Okay? Falls in 410. Who are some of the groups of people who are going to cause the fall of Rome in 410? Barbarians. Barbarians, what else can we call them? The Zagoths, Barbarians, we call them Vandals. Franks, Visigoths, okay, all of those work. So that's period two. So then it falls into chaos for a while, okay? So it's chaos, nothing's really happening. Then in period three, the Franks are going to turn to Catholicism. They're going to, to adopt Christianity, okay? So in period three, they turn to Christianity. Then you're going to have the Carolinian Empire. The Carolinian. It's going to be started by who? Charlemagne. No. Charles. The Hammer. Where is this taking place? In Western Europe. No. Charles the Hammer Martel. What is Charles Martel famous for? Philip. They beat the Moors. In the Battle of Tours. At Tours. And who are the Moors? Okay, so they beat the Moors at the Battle of Tours. So his grandson. Who's his grandson? Charlemagne. Oh my god. Charlemagne is going to come into power. Now, under Charlemagne, He's going to centralize the rule. He's the first centralized ruler in Western Europe post-Rome. He's going to introduce the Missi Dominaci, and the Missi Dominaci is essentially an audit to make sure no government abuses. Okay, that's a good thing for regular people like you and I. He's also pro-reading and education. It's pro-education. Okay, um, and he is going to save the Pope. And what does he get in return for saving the Pope? <coughs> he gets a new title. What's his new title? Holy Roman. Title of Holy Roman <laughs> Emperor. He gets a new title called Holy Roman Emperor. Okay? So, his empire dies with him because his sons are going to kill each other. Correct? <coughs> so, it's chaos. So, then after... The Carolinian, then we have something called the Holy Roman Empire, and it was just created because they're like, ah, shit. Holy Roman Empire, okay? It was started by Otto I, okay? And it is all about, it. all they do really is protect the Pope. That's all they do. They don't accomplish anything. They don't really do anything. They just call themselves the Holy Roman Empire, and all they do is protect the Pope. But they don't do a really shitty job because the Pope gets sacked like 14 times. So, not really the heroes we've been waiting for, but maybe the heroes we deserve. Jake? What does that say after the... There's no government abuse. Colton. Um, 
Is it worth going over like I'm the terrible? No. You can cite them, great, if you can't, it's not a big deal. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, Cynthia. Our parents would love the Russian, but our parents would have no Russian. Yeah, I, like I said throughout the year, I don't know why parents would love them. But if you can cite them, great. If you can't. I think it's because the office is Russian. Right? Probably. Yeah, of course, you're biased towards your own stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm an American, so I like talking about American stuff, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you got? Uh, Rod. We do the Americas in period three. Period three Americas is kind of anticlimactic, right? How about we do America's period three so we have like five minutes of conversation? How's that? Is that all right with you? Yeah. All right, here we go. So, who is the base foundation for the Americas? All Mac. So, the biggest thing that you need to know is that the, in period one, the Americas, okay? Period one, you have the All Macs. What are they famous for? Rubber. They are the rubber people? The Islamic. Well, they're mostly known for the rubber and for their statues, the head statues. Okay? So they are the foundation of everyone. Of all American civs. Okay? So they are the core of everything. Okay? Now, you do have the Mayans. The Mayans, they are going to go from period one to two, and they are going to go to the core foundation of the Aztecs. That's why you need to know them. Period two, you've got the Aztecs are going to are gonna rise and the Incans. Goodbye. No, they're going to go in three. That's three. Sorry. I didn't write it. Period three is the Aztecs and the Incans and they die where? They die in four. Why do they die in four? Spanish. Goodbye. What are we doing here? Tomorrow. I'll be honest. Yeah, Marina. You want to see it? You want to take a photo of it? Basically. 